I was like, imagine. I tell you, the scariest, scariest I've been was when we went into Singapore, and I was grilling my wife. About what? Weed. Oh. You know those fucking weed people? They're always like, they're always finding joints and forgetting they had something. Uh, oh, I got a fucking cookie here. I forgot I fucking put this here. You fucking shaking the hair out. Yeah, that's the last one. <laughs> and the diamond comes out. Remember that? In casino? Yeah, yeah. That's the last one, huh? Smack smart. That's yeah. the last. Then he gives her a fucking smack. Yeah. And I was like, like, I don't want to get caned or get the death penalty. Like, I think we were in New Zealand first before we went to Singapore, which, by the way, dude, Singapore fucking airlines, I'm going to tell you this right now, all of the airlines in Asia put our airlines to shame. <laughs> dude, smoking hot stewardesses, still. You can't call like them stewardesses, it was the 19- Bill. You can't call them stewardesses, Bill. Where's your sensitivity, Bill? They're I can call these ones stewardesses because they're fucking hot. <laughs> the second they all became flight attendants, the number just dipped. <laughs> Bitches got fat and shit. Yeah, stewardesses. <laughs> yeah, everybody got grumpy on the plane. They added extra rows. They jam-packed everybody in. Next thing you know, somebody's taking a shit on the fucking food. You know what guy did that? What? He, he got banned for life. And it's the story's been scrubbed from the internet because he's a really rich guy. He got so fucking shit-faced and entitled. White guy, of course. <laughs> I don't know what happened. They shut him off. He dropped a deuce on the food cart. What? Pulled his pants down and shat in front of everybody on the food cart. What? It's a true fucking story. You can't find... I remember all the morning radio stations were doing That's it. physically possible. How is that physically possible? Because the, who's stopping them? All you're trying to do is get out of the fucking way. You know, the person pushing the food cart, somebody fucking pulls their fucking pants down, Seth's going, you're just backing up. You are backing the fuck up. Can I read this story real quick? It's, yes, uh, did you find it? In 1996, February 12th, uh, an yep. investment banker accused of defecating on an airliner's food service cart during a flight pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor charge of threatening a flight attendant and agreed to pay 50000 in restitution. His lawyer said his only problem <laughs> was diarrhea. <laughs> Hold on. I was very angry. <laughs> Quote, I was very angry, said uh, Gerard uh, B. Finneran, 52, uh, he told uh, the magistrate judge uh, he also admitted to making a threat aboard United Flights, uh, United Airlines flight from Buenos Aires to New York on October 20th. A managing director of a trust company in the uh, of the West who lives in an upscale Greenwich, Connecticut house uh, faces up to six months jail and fifty uh, five thousand dollars fine uh, when he was sentenced. Dude, your life is over. There's no way to apologize. There's no way to redeem yourself as a person. That guy now, he's 52 and 96. So that was uh, 25 years ago. He's 77 if he's still alive. And I bet he still sits on his porch. I bet his neighbors never looked at him the same. Oh, my Bro, God. Talk about a slap on the wrist. That is some. That is the pre-9-11 America that I grew up in. That oh. you could take a shit on a fucking cart on an airplane and make threats, not be arrested. He, he told the judge uh, that he had no intentions of carrying out his threat, but badly wanted another glass of wine after the airline uh, had stopped serving alcohol. I became annoyed and said words that implied a physical threat. Asked if he told the attendant he would bust his ass, uh, Finneran said that uh, he assumed that he had something uh, t- said something to that effect. Authorities had alleged in court papers that he started pouring drinks on himself during the flight uh, and had threatened one at- uh, flight attendant and shoved another into, into a seat. Jesus. 
Dude, you know how fucking hammered you got to be? What? The lawyer <laughs> described his client as a marvelous, marvelously decent human being who had flown more than 5 million miles without any other incidents. Without ever shitting on a cart, Paul. <laughs> Holy shit. I mean, I think, I think you could, everybody else collectively has flown all the miles ever. With, he's the only guy who ever shit on a cart. That's, I've flown 5 million miles and never shit on a cart. Guys, you know, it's a bad day. Guy had a bad day. That's going to define him. You forever. know what? I, if I had to go out on a limb, I'd say he was drinking gin. Gin is just a mean liquor. Uh, Gene, gin put me and uh, got me arrested. Gin, yeah. there's something about gin, dude. Gin, gin uh, what is it about gin? Gin and tequila, it's just the, go, you go off. It's the, de it's the devil's cologne, man. Gin, no, tequila, no, man. There's a lot, I've seen a lot of gentlemen tequila drinkers. Gin. Just something about gin, dude. That is like, I don't know what. Everybody goes Mississippi burning when they fucking drink gin. Gin changes the faith, too, right? Like, you ever you see somebody's face drunk, Bill? You've seen my face drunk. I've seen your face. Gin face drunk? When somebody's drunk on gin, there's like a, it's like a twisted evil fucking something happens, dude. It's like an exorcism. You become Mr. Hyde. You fucking, your beard gets fuller. You just fucking, you, you're lurking in the shadows. Jack the Ripper juice. That stuff is fucking, I don't know what it is. I remember at, last time I had gin, I was with you in uh, New Orleans when we were at the Governor's Palace or whatever that place is called, that great restaurant. Commander Palace. Commander Palace, yeah. We fucking, uh, I had, you, I, you know what i I think I just had straight gin and I was nervous. That floral taste to it. I'm like, there's something going on here. Hey, dude, I, I got, we got to wrap this podcast up, up, man. I yeah. got to hit the gym here. Um, I have right, to live guys. my best life, Paul, and hit the gym. All right, guys. Well, this has been episode 41. Um, speaking of Thanksgiving and the holidays, Thanksgiving weekend, my last dates of the year will be uh, November 26th and 27th, uh, the day after Thanksgiving um, at what is it? Uh, the stress factory in Bridgeport, Connecticut, beautiful Bridgeport, Connecticut. So get tickets to that. I will be uh, doing my new hour and that's the last of the year. So uh, come out to that. Thank everybody at Skankfest who came up and said nice words about myself, about the Verzi effect, about anything better, dude. I got to tell you, that was fucking amazing. Uh, I heard and nothing but amazing things about Skankfest. Everybody's dude, saying that they did it right. Dude. I've never seen a festival by comedians for comedians. Bob Saget showed up and Jessica Kirsten. I ended up fucking smoking a cigar in Doug Stanhope's shower with them. It's a fucking whole, you know, wild thing. So anyway, yeah, we went to his room and he was just like, yeah, there was, yeah, this giant thing. And someone goes, take a picture. I'm sitting there with a fucking, I mean, dude, that guy's in a suit. We had the greatest time. Uh, yeah. But everybody coming up, dude, the love in that place, the love and appreciation. I've never felt anything like it, man. I've never felt anything fucking like it before. All the comedians were like, dude, I've been to festivals. There's a first one where everyone there, thousands of knew everyone. Like it was like they knew all the com. It was fucking amazing. I, I, I actually like, dude, I'm not even going to lie. It was one of the only times in comedy where I was just doing something and I almost got like, not like emotional cry, but like you get this feeling of like, holy fuck, this is why I got into comedy. Like the level of appreciation of the fans, the crowds were fucking nuts. I did this outside tent on Friday at noon and everyone's going, how's this going to go? And all these comedians are on it and there's literally chairs in a parking lot in a big tent. And I went on and you know, the Skankfest fans are hilarious. They're not dressed well, you know? And I even joked to them, like, we're outside in a parking lot doing stand-up. And I was like, look, half of you guys look like we should, we should be giving out Thanksgiving turkeys to you, right? Like, they were fucking right. And, and, it, and it fucking crushed. And, like, they just, everything you did, we're just into it, dude. We're, like, crushing this outside thing. Then you go to another venue that's in that same venue. People, oh, dude, I love you. Oh, man, where can I, dude, it was just amazing. So, um, yeah, it was, it was people, were, I, I ran into Eddie Pepitone. And he just goes, dude, how this is like one of the most insane dude. Like if you walked in, they were just like, they, they were like, thank you so much. Like dude, how underrated is Eddie Pepitone? One of 
one of the <laughs> my favorite Eddie Pepitone joke is when he goes, yeah, the magician came. You see the corner. You see the corner. Now you see the corner. You see the corner. He goes, yeah, go fuck yourself. He goes, that's not a magic trick. He goes, you want to do a trick? <laughs> he goes, tell me how I can feel safe in this world. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. How great is that guy, dude? Uh, no, but- he's unbelievable. Um, I mean, I think he's top five out there for the longest fucking time, and I, I don't, for some fucking reason, ageism or whatever. He just, I think, you got to go see Eddie Pepitone. No, oh, so so All great. Right. But uh, yeah, so and I got to go hit an elliptical, Paul. We will. We got to wrap this up. Wait, Shout wait, wait. out to Detroit, Michigan, making a comeback, man. Congratulations! You're getting the soulless glass towers too, where you're gonna walk in and they're gonna play vibe music, so they can create a vibe for all the vibeless people that are gonna move in there. I wish everybody. I like real Detroit people. I hope hope everybody has a good Christmas season. Uh, (laughs) Just skipping over. No, you gotta celebrate all of the holidays, man. Go Uh, apple picking. Do the whole thing with the kids. Speaking of that, I'm going to go spend my birthday with the kids. Love you guys. I will see.